Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so the trainer is joining within two minutes. Uh, please wait for another two minutes. Hello. Okay, yeah. Okay. You can start. okay. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You can. You can. Uh, you You can hear. Yeah. Can you? Can you see my screen? No, sir, we are not able to see, see us. Not able to see the screen. Okay, just a moment. Let me know when you can see my screen, yeah? Sorry for the technical problems, guys. You able to see my screen now? Uh, yes, sir. We are able to see your screen. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you the screen. So can I know how many students are there, uh, please? Hello? Sir, right now, three, uh, six people are there. Six people are there, right? Yeah, okay. Hi. So yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. So my name is Uday, and uh, I have 14 years of experience in software testing, 14 plus years of experience in software testing. So yeah, welcome to Logi Labs Technologies and uh, welcome to manual testing training. So hope you guys have scanned the course content and you got the course content, right? So if you got the course content, Okay, so I just want, uh, if you got the course content, can you type in the chat please saying yes? So you guys got the, can you, can you guys type in a uh, message in the message box? And hope all the participants can hear my voice, right? Yeah, someone has raised their hand. hand. Can you please uh, tell me if there is any problem? So you got the co course content, Monica. 
Monica, you got the course content right. So all the yeah, all the six six attendees got the course content. So yeah. So I'll move on to the next slide. And also you guys are able to see the screen. Just let me know if you guys are able to see the screen, please. Okay, enable the chart option for everyone. Yes, I have enabled the chart option for everyone. Can the attendees type in now? See your screen, okay. And am I audible, right? Okay. So moving on to the next slide, uh, for any queries, contact Logi, uh, Logic Labs team. And uh, this is a weekend uh, sessions and uh, every session is uh, two hours. The first two sessions are free and uh, third session uh, Zoom meeting link will be shared to registered participants only. For session updates, join our WhatsApp community. So we got the WhatsApp group link as well. And uh, all the session recordings and notes will be accessible through LMS Graphy. For any support, uh, Logic Lab support team is available Monday to Saturday in between 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So you can contact the Logitech support uh, guys. And uh, yeah, so we will start the course now. So I'll move on to the next start, uh, next uh, slide before uh, going to the next slide. Uh, I want you guys to introduce yourself uh, starting from uh, uh, Aishwarya. Uh, I'll allow you guys to talk. So can you please introduce yourself, Aishwarya? Are you able to communicate? You, you need to unmute yourself first to talk. Uh, Monica. Yeah. Can you please introduce yourself, Monica? I've allowed you to talk, so unmute yourself and uh, talk. Not able to hear. Yeah, myself, Monica. Completed my exam. Okay, Nishant. Nishant, can you hear me? Can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, yeah, sir. My name is Nishant Savare. I have completed my bachelor's in computer engineering. Okay. Next. Uh... Siduri. Uh, hi, my name is Siduri. Uh, I'm from uh, Nagpur. I'm just uh, uh, taking the course for next, going to take the start my career. So. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, welcome and uh, all the best for this course. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, mute yourself and I'm going to start the course today. So what is uh, software testing? So what is software testing? So I'm going to I'm going to go through the uh, content now. So the content, I'll just do you uh, do a screen share. So if you can see the screen, uh, let me know if you can see the course content again. Are you able to see the course content, guys? So just raise uh, a hand saying that you can see the course content. Okay, so 
the software testing is an activity that evaluates the quantity, uh, the quality and the robustness of the software and also helps to identify defects. So main objectives are to find defects, understand what is software testing. Uh, in this course, you will learn how to write test plans, test scenarios, test cases, how to execute test cases. You'll understand the bug life cycle. You'll understand what is software development life cycle. You'll understand the SDLC and SDLC as well. And uh, I'll also show you how to write test cases. I'll show you how to write test scenarios and test plans. So prerequisites, as we know that uh, you need to uh, have basic knowledge of computers. That's enough to learn uh, manual testing. And uh, introduction to software testing. So in this course, you will learn what is software testing, why software testing, and what is actually a software you will learn the benefits of uh, software testing you will who will who will do the software testing and what is software quality uh, what is a defect bug error or failure and the other modules which i will cover in this session and going through the next coming sessions so what is software development life cycle so you'll understand what is software development life cycle, why software development life cycle is used to produce a software and various phases of our software development life cycle, right from initial phase to delivery and maintenance phase. And what are the various modules for software development life cycle? So like we got waterfall model, V model, uh, agile model uh, with scrum method and we also got some more uh, modules but we will focus on waterfall model v model agile model uh, with scrum methodology so i will also explain a uh, testing processes implementing and test planning so requirements gathering and understanding from uh, yeah and requirements, understanding of SRS documents, preparing the clarifications, questions to be asked to business analysts, developers, and uh, who are all involved in the project. I'll explain you the various testing methodologies, like black box testing, white box testing, gray box testing. So what actually is black box testing? Uh, who will perform black box testing, how to perform black box testing, and the various techniques involved in the black box testing, uh, the graphical user face testing, and uh, functional and non-functional testing. So what are all the techniques and also what kind of uh, uh, testings are available in black, black box testing? So I will also uh, explain you about what is white box testing, uh, gray box testing, and after that, we got levels of software testing. So we got various, we, uh, we got a lot of uh, types of testing like unit testing, performance testing, component testing, integration testing. So I'll explain to you what are those uh, uh, testings which are involved in uh, testing a software. Then we have this quality assurance versus quality control. So I'll explain to you what is verification and what is validation and functional testing types. What are the functional testing types like smoke testing, sanity testing, why we do retesting, why we actually do regression testing, what is exploratory testing, interface testing, end-to-end -end testing and recovery testing. And also I'll explain you what is non-functional testing, like what is performance testing, why actually we do performance testing, why we do load testing on websites and stuff like that. I'll also explain you how to design test cases. I'll explain you some of the techniques uh, to test, so which are called the boundary value analysis, equivalence class analysis, state transition, error guessing. And I'll, I'll also teach you how to uh, uh, create test data and uh, uh, review test cases. And also I'll teach you how to uh, create a traceability matrix. And bug life cycle, when you find a bug, in a software or on a website how the bug is reported to the developer and uh, how you put the severity and the priority uh, to that bug and i will also explain you what is test planning and what really goes into test planning and 
I'll also uh, explain you what is a text execution. When you start test execution, at what level, again, you stop your test execution, uh, test case execution, and stuff like that. And uh, I'll also explain you the UAT, which is user acceptance testing and what are the test deliverables or test artifacts like whenever when you finish the testing and uh, when you start testing and finish testing what are the deliverables or documents which you agree uh, to create like for example the test plan document the test cases document the test scenarios document defect analysis reports and everything so any questions here guys so any questions uh, please can you uh, ask any questions or are you clear on it if you are clear on it if you can just message on the chat please are you clear monica nishant sinduri aniruddha I'm unable to text. So. Unable to text, so I will. Yeah, if are you, are you able to text now? No. Still no. Just a moment. Yeah, I think you should be able to text now. Try, try please, try once. No, sir, it's still disabled. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, let me see once. Yes, sir, they can chat right now. Yeah, you can chat now. Okay. Okay, so hope you have I've gone through the course content and uh, I will introduce myself. So uh, I'm Uday and I have 14 years of experience in software testing. So I have worked in uh, various organizations, uh, which includes the domains like educational domain and uh, also e-commerce uh, websites. So I have tested for some of the companies' uh, uh, e-commerce websites. And uh, I've also tested uh, APIs in some of the companies which I have worked. And uh, yeah. This is about uh, me. And uh, if you also got any questions, you can uh, uh, write in the chat or you can you can straight away ask the questions by interrupting. Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's start uh, the course. I'll share the PowerPoint. Okay, so what is software? Um, so the simple example uh, for a software is, let's take MS Paint. So for example, if we take MS Paint, so I'll show you the MS Paint. So for example, this is a software. MS Paint is a software. So what actually is a software is, a software is a collection of programs to perform a task. A software is a set of instructions, data, or program used to operate computers and execute specific tasks. So what does it mean is, so if you consider, so for example, if this is a software, so this is all a set of programs. So arrays is a program, text is a program, Zoom is a program. So collection of all these programs is a software, is a paint software. So hope that makes sense. So for example, using the, the text, you can write text here, right? You can write text, any text here. So this is one program. 
okay and now this is one more program erase so using this erase functionality you can erase the text so collection of all these programs is a software okay any questions on this if not i'll continue to the next one so types of computer software so we have three types of computer software one is system software which is operating system so os is a software so without os we can we, we cannot run a laptop or a desktop so operating system is a software and we also have utility software and application software so i'll give you some of the examples of system software so system software is an operating system so we got windows operating system is a software we have linux operating system which is a software and for mac laptops we got mac os so which is also a software and another form of software is utility software for example utility software are antiviruses file management system disk management tools these are all used uh, to manage the utilities of the software so for example if there is if you install a, a disk management uh, tool which is a software you can manage the disk storage and if you uh, if you install an antivirus on a on a system you can manage you can block uh, things like uh, which are vulnerable so you can use those kind of softwares and rest which is called the application software, which is like rest. If you exclude utility software and system software, the rest all falls under application software. Simple example of an application software is, I will show you one website, which is, so if you see, this is a web application, this is a software. So you've got a lot of functionalities here. So you got login functionality here. So you need to put password to log into it. So this is a software. So depending, and also you got Word, which is a software, Excel is a software and web browser. So Chrome, Chrome is a, is a software. Mozilla Firefox is a software and uh, graphics software. So for example, if you consider a graphic software, which is Adobe Photoshop is also a software. So mainly all the computer softwares are categorized into three, which is system software, utility software, and application software. Okay, so any, any questions on this guys, please? What is the software and types of computer softwares? You can type in the chat, yes or no. Oh, what is this business software? So business software is, so for example, if you, if you consider there is a very big uh, business or a manufacturing company, so they use a software, which is called ERP, which is called enterprise resource planning software. So this comes under the business software and CRM, which is called customer relationship management software, which is also a business software. So these are all called business softwares. Okay, any, any other questions, guys? I'll just give you one example for uh, CRM software. So if you see uh, CRM software, there are five CRM software. So for example, Monday, uh, Monday, it's a sales CRM. So this is mainly used by companies to manage the customer relationship. So 
Monday and uh, models Dynamics 365 CRM. This software is from Microsoft. This is a business software. So mainly uh, sales companies uh, use these uh, softwares, uh, CRMs. Hope that's clear. Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah. Anyone, any questions? Okay, so I will move on to the next slide. So what is actually a software testing? So what is testing? What is software testing? I'll explain you first what is testing. Okay, so let's take an example of uh, Let's take an example of a laptop. Okay, so so let's take an example of a laptop. So what happens in the uh, laptop is once when you once when you turn on the laptop, the laptop should get turned on. So that is one of the functionality of the laptop. So there is an XYZ company, XYZ company, which, which creates or which manufactures laptops. Okay. So who is who is actually responsible to who is actually responsible to see that the laptop is working fine? So that is a responsibility of a tester. So what does a tester do is based on the requirements and specifications, they will see that the laptop is in working condition and also when it is kept on a e-commerce website or when you buy this laptop it is met the customer requirements okay so for example on a laptop you will see that uh, there are many buttons so a tester so a tester is responsible so a tester's role is to see that all the buttons are functional so when you click on the volume button the volume increases when you click on the uh, brightness the brightness should increase when you power up the uh, laptop with a cable so it should show a symbol saying that the battery is getting charged so these are all the things a tester has to check before this product is being sent into the market so that once when it is tested the customers are comfortable with this laptop okay so so the basic checks which are done by the uh, tester and also rigorous testing, which is done. This is all the responsibility of a tester. Okay, so what is testing is, so when, you, when, when there is a product or a software, as a tester, it's the responsibility of a tester to test that product, okay? And now I'll explain you what is the role of verification and validation. Okay, so the XYZ company, they will create in the requirements document or in their document say that uh, this laptop should be certain inches and uh, the buttons 
should be placed based on the UK uh, keyboard or US keyboard or India keyboard. So when we say India keyboard, it should have a currency of rupee. If we have um, a UK laptop, one of the keys should be a pounds key. And if it's a US laptop, it has to be a dollar key. So these are all the uh, requirements. So the tester creates a checklist, okay, to go through, to go through all these specifications are met as per the requirements document. document and you will also go through the uh, manual to see that the laptop is working and also from the customer point of view you will go through the manual and see it is all responsibility of the tester okay so verification so this process this process is called verification Okay. And now what is validation? What is validation? So if you see as per the spec, as per the specifications document or as per the requirements document, the laptop is working fine. So you can see the screen and you got all the number of, but number of buttons which has to be present on the laptop. They are there and uh, the power cable is there when you turn on the power the laptop is getting turned on and uh, so everything is happening so this is called verification so what is validation so i'll give you one small example of what is validation so validation is so in verification what you do is when you turn on the power the laptop will get turned on in one minute let's say one minute or 30 seconds or 45 seconds but what happens when you when you turn on the power button, power button and it's not getting turned on. So it's taking around five minutes and it is not written in the specifications document or it is, it is not written anywhere saying that uh, the, when, you, when you turn on the power, the laptop is taking around five minutes or 10 minutes to turn on. So in order to check that, the basic functionality when you click or when you press the power button, the laptop should be turned on. So it should not take around five minutes or it should not take around 10 minutes. That's called validation. Okay. Verification. Verification is a process where you go through all the specification documents and you, you see that the length, uh, the, the laptop length is like uh, 17 inches monitor. You'll, you'll see that all the, all the buttons are there. They're functional. And when you, when you put, when you, when you click on the, uh, when you, when you, when you turn on the button, power button, the, the laptop is getting turned on. And, uh, but, there should be some validation like if you if you if you click on the button it should turn on immediately it should not take 5 minutes so so this this kind of process this kind of process is called this kind of uh, uh, process is called validation validation process and the verification and validation this is the responsibility of a tester. Okay, so hope you understood what is verification and validation and what is testing on a whole. So if you can, yeah, you can ask me any questions uh, on the example which I have uh, given just now. No questions, I will move on to the slides again. 
So I, I, I explained to you what is testing. I explained to you uh, what is verification and validation in testing, okay? And what is software testing? So what is software testing? So software testing is a process of verification and validation of the software to check whether it is working as per the, re as per the requirements and expectations of the customer. Okay, so what is software testing? So software testing is a process of checking the working of the software and software testing is a process of verification and validation of the software to check whether it is working as per the expectations. So imagine if the val validation is not happening. So if you, if you press the uh, laptop button and it is taking 10 minutes of time to turn on the laptop, is it a working soft software? Is it, is, it, is it like you will send, this, send the a laptop to the market? So it's a question you can answer. If for example, it's a validation process. When you click on the turn on button, it's taking 10 minutes for the laptop to turn on. Anyone can answer. Will you send it to the customers? Will you send the laptop to the customers? Can you hear me? Anybody, Monica, Sinduri, Aniruddha, you can answer. So for example, if there is a laptop, when you turn on the laptop, it is taking 10 minutes of time. Will you send it saying that it is past testing and will you send it to the market in order to sell the laptop? No, we should ver verify the validation is the limit is there, right? As per the requirement. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. So we can't we can't send it to the uh, market. So because in the validation process, we found out that it is taking 10 minutes. So we immediately reject it. So, the, so, so this is what testing is. So as per the specifications, as per the requirements, as per the company requirements, you have tested and you have verified the whole laptop saying that the buttons are working fine. The, the, the power button is working fine. The, the charging, when you do the charging, the, the battery is getting charged. So you do all these verifications based on the specifications and also when you do something like uh, a testing, which is not specified in the requirement documents, that process is called validation. And if any of this verification and validation fails, we can't pass the software into the market. Okay, so why? Yeah, so why software testing? So, so why software testing is done? So why software testing is done is to identify defects and reduce flaws in the system and increase overall quality of the system. So as I mentioned you, why testers do software testing is, and their responsibility is to find defects and increase the overall quality of the system. So I'll give you some examples. So I'll give you some examples of why testing is required. And I will also give you in real time, in real time, there are situations where systems have failed and I'll show you what really happens when systems fail. Okay, this is one example. So, TSB is a bank in UK 
which has been fined 50 million pounds for IT meltdown that locked customers out of accounts for weeks. So for example, if I am a customer in SBI bank, so I have an SBI app, app on my mobile phone, or I have phone pay, or I have a Paytm on my mobile phone. If I'm trying to send money, if the Paytm or the phone pay does not send the money and the app is not running for weeks, that is not a good software. So this really happened on, in, in UK in a bank called TSB where it was logged for one week or some weeks or two weeks, three weeks, I don't know, for customers. So customers are unable to make transactions using their app on mobile phone, using, uh, using their online logins. They're not able to make transactions. There are important transactions to be made, important payments to be made. So this is one example. If good quality software is not in the market, if good quality software is not in the market, people won't trust the bank or any application. For example, even if you take Flipkart, Amazon, Flipkart, for example, when I, click, when, I, when I type in Flipkart, when I click on Flipkart, it immediately lands on the Flipkart. So for example, if I want to buy a camera and when I click on it, nothing is happening. So that is not a good software or that is, I mean, this is not a good website. And what happens is slowly the trust and the credibility of this software is lost. And people won't come to this website and a lot of money is lost. So always testers have to focus on the quality and testers are responsible for the quality and also the people who are involved in developing, for example, Flipkart is developed by the developers, the people who are involved, the business analysts, and uh, the people who are involved in this Flipkart project. They are all responsible for the quality and testing and quality wise, it's the responsibility of the tester to see that when I click on this Canon camera, it is moving to the next page, which is the product display page. And from the product, uh, uh, product display page, I can click on the button, which is R2 cat, cart button functionality. When I click on that, it is going into the cart. Okay. When I go back, if you see, it, it, it has been added into the cart and I can buy, buy. So when I click on the buy button, it is taking me to the logging page. So these are all has to be tested by a tester. Okay. Going back to the other example, this one. So bad software costs US, which is United States businesses around 2.4 trillion in 2022. So imagine the US one country itself because of bad software, they have lost 2.4 trillion in 2022. Imagine across the world. So how important it is for software testers and the people who are involved in the project or building softwares Everybody is responsible for the quality and software testers are the gatekeepers of the quality, okay? Yeah, any, any questions? Any questions now uh, on what is software testing? What is actually testing? Verification and validation. What is software testing as a complete picture and why software testing needs to be done? Any, any questions, please? Anybody, Anirudha, Monica, Sinduri.
if you're clear in this topic, uh, just raise your hand or type. Yeah, okay, no, sir. Okay. So next, I will move on to the next slide, which is benefits of software testing. So what are the benefits of software testing? So the main benefits of software testing. So for example, so for example, we have Flipkart website or Amazon website. So what happens is the main benefits when testing has been done, the customer is very much satisfied with the Flipkart or the Amazon website. So why the customer is satisfied is because when he wants to buy a product on Amazon, he's able to navigate through the product section and navigate through the product page, product display page, and he's able to log into the log into his own account. OTP is being sent to his mobile phone, which is a robust security feature. So he can only log in when the OTP goes into his mobile phone and when he enters that OTP into the website, he can access his own account. And customer is very much satisfied, satisfied and cost effective. So the, the reason benefits of software testing is cost effective is always remember as a tester, if a tester finds out the bug at an earlier stage, it is a very less cost to fix the bug. But if a bug is in production or in the live environment, it is very expensive to fix the bug because it has to go through the change request. Again, a developer has to be assigned to fix the bug. Again, it goes to the management and they will ask questions why a bug has been uh, in the production environment or in the live environment. So a lot of questions will be raised and uh, the people who are involved in quality will be questioned. The tester will be questioned. The developers will be questioned. So always it is very important that to catch bugs at early stage. And the flip and the Amazon website or Flipkart website, when you test it properly, when you test all the scenarios, all the test cases, and uh, when you pass all of the test cases, there is a very low chance of failure. So the Amazon or the Flipkart website, there is very low chance of failure uh, of the website. And also when you test the Flipkart or the Amazon website, if there is any uh, a system down or if there is any kind of uh, crash uh, in the software, it has to recover immediately and the reliability should be good. So for example, due to some X, Y, Z reasons, the Flipkart website has crashed. So it has to, when, when the internet is back on or when you restart your phone, it has to recover immediately or recover easily. So based on this, what happens is people will have good amount of reliability on Flipkart or Amazon websites. Okay, so who, who will do the software testing? So who, who is actually responsible for the software testing? The software testers are responsible for testing of the software. So software testing, so software, the testers are responsible to test the software. It might be a Flipkart website, or it might be a Skype, or it might be any software. The software testers are responsible for testing the software. And overall quality, overall quality of the software is the responsibility of everyone who is involved in the project. So who is involved in the project? The architect, the architect is involved, the business analyst is involved, the product owner is involved, testers are involved, the designers are involved, the senior management are involved. So these are all, all the people are responsible as a collective, as a collective, all are responsible for the quality, okay? So now what is the definition of software quality or what is software quality, okay? So in the requirements document, 
the quality of the software can be defined as the ability of the software to function as per the requirements okay so i'll show you the let's go to flipkart okay so as a tester what you do is you click here you when you click here it has to land on the same page okay so for example if you click here it is landing in a different page or it is directly going to the payments page so that's not requirements so that has failed the requirements so when you click on the logo it has to land on the home page and when you click on sign in it has to go to the login page these functionalities these functionalities and when you click on become a seller it has to go to the seller page okay seller page when you click on back it has to come back to the normal flipkart page when you click on the home button it again has to land on the home button and you need to check the promotions the display of this images is correct as per the requirements so for example if i click on the acer monitor so the logo or the picture is shown here okay you're able to filter using the price you're able to filter using the high low price you're able to filter newest first okay you need to see whether the price is displayed correctly okay when you click on bank offer it is going it is displaying in a new tab a new tab is uh, shown so for example when you click on bank it should not overlap on the current uh, page which is this it should it should land on a new new window so if you see when i click on the bank of or bank offer it is landing on a new window okay so these are all the things so so whatever i'm telling is like one person one person won't test this there are there are many testers in a team for example if you are a tester you are assigned to test one one functionality so for example you were given a task to test all the electronics so it is your responsibility to to to, to test all the electronics some other person in your team is uh, given the responsibility to test tvs and application some other person has been given a, a, a chance to test the baby and kids and some other person has been given an uh, offer zone module to be tested so there are many testers who are involved in testing so terminology wise this is called footer this 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 dark blue area is called footer area and who is responsible to test the footer area the tester so some other tester is responsible to test the footer and this is the header someone someone else is responsible to test the header so so on and so forth okay Okay, so when it comes to the software products, it must be satisfying all the functionalities written down in the SRS document. Okay, so what is so so in the requirements document? So what is SRS? SRS is nothing but software requirement specification document. This is the document where the business analyst writes all the requirements. This is where it is mentioned that when you click on a button, it has to land. on the payments page when you click on the sign in button it has to land on the sign in page so you need to verify all the functionalities are working fine and you also need to validate one more example so what happens is when you sign in if you are a new customer when you sign in when you enter an email address and when you request an otp and when you successfully are registered an account has been created there is there is this particular data is saved in the database okay so your your email address it might be your email address it might be your mobile number and your first name surname your address so this is stored in the back end so someone uh, you, someone is responsible to validate okay the mobile number the person's name email address has been stored in the database for validation purpose okay
And the next one is, what is a mistake, error, defect, bug, and a failure? And a failure. I'll explain you what is. Okay. So, for example, this is Flipkart. Okay. Flipkart, and this is the development this is development environment okay so everybody makes mistakes every human being makes makes mistakes okay so developers the people who write the code they write the code for flipkart website okay so the developers sometimes they make mistakes Okay, so sometimes they make mistakes. Mistakes in the code. So the mistakes which are made in the code are called as errors. Errors. Okay, the mistakes. So everybody makes mistakes, everybody. So sometimes testers make mistakes, sometimes developers make mistakes, sometimes the business analyst who is writing the requirements make mistakes, okay? So mistakes in the code, in the code are referred to as errors, okay? So what happens is when the developer writes a code, that code is reviewed by his colleague, or his fellow developer. So even if he is not able to find that error, so what happens is that error is passed onto the test environment. So in test environment, error is called as bug. Okay. The same error, the same error in development, it is called as an error. The same error in test environment is bug. And these bugs are found by the developer. Okay. And then the next is bug and interchangeably, we can also use as fault. Okay. Next is requirements okay requirements and then we have got code requirement code okay so in requirements in requirements sometimes the sometimes the business analyst makes mistakes okay or makes some uh, kind of a defect okay so here so here we call in requirements we call it as defects defects in code, we call them as errors, but in requirements, we call them as defects. And in a te test environment, we call them as bugs. So these are the terms which are used. And this is the difference of what is a mistake and everybody makes mistakes. And what th th these are all the differences. What is an error and what is a defect and what is bug or fault? Okay. So any questions, any questions? Any questions, please? Monica, Sindhuri, 
Aniruddha, any questions on this, please? What is quality of who will who will be doing software testing? Benefits benefits of software testing, mistake, error, defect, bug, and failure. You can type in the chat if there is no questions. Now, shall I move on to the next slide? Uh, sir, here bug yeah. is a defect, but not all defects are bugs you wrote here. So yeah. what that meaning? Okay. So for example, in requirements, yeah. In requirements, we got defects here. Okay. And in test environment, we got bugs. So we might have, so we might have a bug is a defect, but not all defects are bugs. Okay. So if you see in test environment, you will, you might find many bugs here. Okay. Type in here. Bugs. Okay and defects so for example in requirements document yeah sometimes you might in requirements what happens is sometimes the business analyst might write something for example a cosmetic change change okay So here it is a defect, okay? Here in the requirements document, there is a cosmetic change and it is a defect, but not all, but not, what I meant here is, but not all defects are bugs, okay? So this is just a, a small cosmetic change and this is, this is a defect in the requirements document, but that is not a bug, okay? So bugs are, found, are mainly found in test environment. Hi, Hi. 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 I think I can hear Hi. some background noise. Hi. 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 I think uh, someone, uh, I think mute, they should mute, mute it. I I Okay, I'm muted. Okay. So hope this is clear. Uh, defects wise. Okay. Move on to the next slide. Okay. So I'll explain you in this slide what is a service based company and what is a product based company so what is a service based company so let's take a new one so what is a service based company okay
okay so service based company the examples of service based companies are wipro accenture cognizant so what is a service here i'll give you an example so what happens is an xyz company an xyz company is developing is developing a software okay so an xyz company is developing a software so companies like wipro or infosys okay so what happens is an xyz company is developing a soft uh, software so when a, when a software is about to be developed so this service based companies have lot of resources with them they might be having developers or they might be having testers and then so if these testers they go and work in these companies to develop the software this is a service based company so wipro and infosys is a service based company and what is product based company product based company is microsoft yeah so microsoft develops lots of products microsoft develops many products which are you got word excel and you got operating systems okay so what happens is these companies microsoft they recruit people okay they recruit people to test their own products which are word excel operating systems windows operating system so these are product based companies so service based companies are wipro infosys accenture okay they are providing a service they are providing service to some some companies so those are service based companies and product based companies are the companies which develop their products microsoft oracle sap so these are all product based companies they have their own products oracle has their own products microsoft has their own products so they recruit people they recruit people and then the people who test or involved in those kind of companies are called the product based companies okay so what is product versus project i'll explain the what is product versus product so there are many products in the market so i'll give you one example is whatsapp whatsapp is a product and uh, we got skype is a product okay so these are all products okay so these are all products and uh, whatsapp if someone if if whatsapp has developed by the team whatsapp team so they develop their own product yeah and they release the product in the market okay you can download it similarly skype and uh, there are some other products yeah which you can download so these are all products and what is the project okay so we got a xyz company
okay and we got uh, here a b c testing testing company so in this company we have uh, around 100 testers and we got developers the developers okay and an xyz company they're developing a y product okay a y product so abc testing company has services okay they they market themselves as abc testing company and they say that we got 100 testers and 50 developers and xyz company wants their y product so they 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 have z product they have they have they have z product they have uh, d product okay they've got many products okay in this for example if we take this y product y product and then y product y product okay so this y product this y product is being tested by abc testing company okay so this y product is a project for them so this is a project for them so for this this okay so for this so this is a product for this company but in this company abc testing company is only testing a project of y product okay so this is project okay so just a project just just project which is being tested by abc testing company so here the abc testing company is selling their services which is uh, testing they say that we have 100 testers capability and we got 50 testers uh, 50 developers capability so what what happens is xyz company will give the project to abc testing company so that is the main difference between what is a product and a project or what is, or product versus project So any questions, any questions on this, please? Any questions, Anirudha, Deepthi, Monica, Sinduri? Hope you understood what is service-based company and you understood what is product based company what is the difference between product versus project you can just uh, type in saying yes or raise your hand if you have any questions No questions. Shall I move on to the next slide? Anybody? Yeah, okay. So I will move on to the next slide. So the next slide is software testing career paths okay so software testing as a career so what is the step one is 
you need to learn manual testing. You need to be thorough in manual testing. So when I say manual testing, you should understand what is functional testing, what is non-functional testing, and uh, what is unit testing. So you need to understand all these terminologies and uh, you should know what is regression testing. You should know what is uh, retesting, sanity testing, smoke testing. So what is test data? and how test cases are written, how test scenarios are written, and uh, how to write test plans, and how to approach when, 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 your, when your senior manager says, can you please test this website? How, how to go, how to start, how to start that particular testing, where to start, where to exit, whom should you send reports to? These are all comes under manual testing, okay? So manual testing also, I will give you one more example. As you get experience in manual testing, you should also know the domain knowledge. So for example, if I got a job as a tester in Flipkart, it comes under e-commerce, okay? So what happens gradually is when you start testing these kinds of e-commerce websites you will get to know the terminology okay some of the terminology is when i click on this for example this phone realme phone this is a filter page okay and when you click on this particular mobile phone this is product display page so this is all the terminology of e-commerce so when you click on login so it goes into the login page, cart. So these are all the terminologies or domain knowledge. So as you keep testing these things, so what happens is you will gain domain knowledge. So for example, if you've got ICICI bank, so ICICI bank. So if you test these kind of websites, here you don't have any, any kind of e-commerce appearing. This is all bank website, okay? So you need to get knowledge on this. So while doing manual testing, so what happens is your domain knowledge becomes banking domain knowledge. Similarly, you got healthcare, okay? You got education, testing education products, okay? So as you gain knowledge in manual testing, so what happens is whenever you, you find a job, so for example, if you get a job in Flipkart, you, your domain knowledge increases in e-commerce. If you get a job in bank, your, your domain knowledge in, in banking sector becomes good, okay? And after that, the next step in your career path is automation testing. So you need to learn automation testing. The tools which are used for automation testing are Selenium and Java and Selenium. And currently we got Cypress automation tool, Playwright automation tool, et cetera, okay? So then next step is learning mobile testing. So always remember that testing is an ocean, like you got many options, okay? But to start with, this is a step one, manual testing. You need to learn manual testing so that you will, you will know the terminologies. When you talk to your senior managers, you will use the terminologies. When you talk to your senior managers about test plan, they'll understand. So you need to know about the uh, terminology and et cetera. So you will learn all those things when you learn manual testing. When you talk to your manager saying that, yes, I have completed regression testing, they understand, oh, okay, they have completed regression testing. When you say that we have completed end-to-end -end testing, so these are all the terminologies which are used in manual testing. Moving on to step three, mobile testing. So there is a tool called Appium, mobile automation testing. So you can step by step, like step one, learn this. Step two, it will take, for example, it will take years. It, it will, it, it, you won't get it in, uh, in one or two months. It will take time for you to learn automation tool. It will, it will take time for you to learn mobile testing. And then you got desktop applications. So what is a desktop application? Skype is a desktop application. Your Chrome browser is a desktop application. 
So learning about desktop applications and automating them using UFT tools, unified functional testing tools. And then learning about API testing. Again, API testing is huge. So in API testing, we got web services, we got API automation testing. Again, there is performance testing. So in performance testing, small example of performance testing. So for example, if you go to Flipkart, okay? In usual days, Flipkart, for example, thousand users are using every day Flipkart. But on festival days, like Diwali, yeah, there might be lakhs of people using this website, Flipkart. So how to test this? So regular days we got for an hour, we got thousand people using it across India, across the world. But when it comes to Diwali, maybe five lakhs uh, people are using this Flipkart website. So in this, in this kind of situations, performance testing is used. So the tools which are used is JMeter, Load Runner, and security testing. So some, some people try to hack systems. Some people try to hack your Flipkart account. Some people try to hack your ICIC bank account. Security testing is again a big ocean. So why we need security testing? Small functionalities in, in security testing is when you click on login button, when you put your email address and your password, an OTP has to, has to be sent to your mobile phone. That is one of the functionality. So database testing. So database testing, what is database testing? So for, for example, what happens is uh, in Flipkart website. So what happens is when you buy something, when you buy on your name, you buy something, you buy a Realme phone. As soon as you purchase a record, uh, a record has been created in the backend, which is database. So if you see, for example, on your name, on your name, so I can't find an e-commerce, uh, e-commerce, yeah. So for example, uh, your name, so this is a record in the database, in the SQL database, a record will be created saying that so-and-so person has bought a, a mobile phone on so-and-so date, will have your mobile number, your birth, Bird, uh, birthday date, you will have your address. So one record will be created. And validation testing has to be done, checking that, okay, when I when when in the front end, which is on the website, when I buy a phone, this particular phone is stored in the database as a record with my name, with, with, the, with the customer's name, with the phone number and et cetera. Okay, so, and then uh, doing research on the latest AI, uh, machine learning testing from, from testing perspective. So you got uh, now latest uh, AI tools are coming. Machine learning from, from only testing perspective. Okay, so try to uh, do some research and see which are the AI testing tools. So I'll just type in some of the artificial intelligent testing tools which are coming in the market. So if you see AI testing tools, Apply tools, and some of the, yeah, some of the testing tools are coming into the market. So this is your career path. So plan, plan according, accordingly. So uh, step one, step two, step three. So step four, step five, step six, step seven, step eight, step nine. And then always remember, learn a programming language. It might be a Java, C Sharp, Python. So why we need to learn a programming language is because it will help you in automation testing, writing code, writing automation code. 
so these programming language anyone anyone to start with anyone is fine java is fine c sharp is fine python is fine python is the most happening now so java is very good so if you learn these things you can automate web browsers okay so any question any questions on career path please Anyone, Aniruddha, Deepti, Monica, Sinduri. Okay, no. Shall I? So I'll move on to the next slide now, uh, which is. Yeah. Okay, so what is software development life cycle? So any company, any software company, which is Microsoft, Oracle, Accenture, or any companies which are developing software, yeah, they go through or they follow the software development lifecycle process. So software development lifecycle process involves planning, creating, testing and deploying a software so why 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 we need software development life cycle so why why we need software development life cycle it is important it helps ensure that right people are involved in the right activities at the right time okay so what task a developer is doing so simple terms is working on the code so the right people are doing the right jobs. So who is testing? At what phase? Who is gathering the requirements? And who is maintaining the software? They all come under software development lifecycle. So some of the benefits of software development life cycle. So what happens is in the software development life cycle, it gives a chance for the business analyst to understand the requirements and understand the goal of the software. So for example, if you take Flipkart, so this application, what is the goal? What is the goal of this application? So the main goal of, of this application is they, the Flipkart people can sell products. It might be anything. It might be uh, groceries. It might be appliances. It might be home furniture. So the end goal is to sell products. So in order to create this complete application or web application, we call it as they follow the software development life cycle. Without following the software development life cycle, nobody can achieve this. So you can't, someone wants to do something, someone wants to do something, so it won't happen. So people have to follow the software development life cycle. So when we follow the software development life cycle, it also gives a chance to us to identify the risks at early stage. And it also gives a chance for us to deliver the solution in stages, such as building prototypes or writing functional specifications. And you can also measure your goals and ensure everything is on track. Okay, so we got 
development environment we got staging environment we got uat environment and we got live environment so for example if we see the flip card so the developers will be working on the develop, uh, development environment so they will be developing lot of code and lot of functionalities will be put into this flip card so they will be working on the flip card development environment and once they have put together all the functionalities and put together all the products then it is the the code is moved to the test environment where the testers will test everything is working as per the requirements and then after that what happens is it is the same code when the testers approve it saying that the flipkart website is working fine it is moved to uat so what is uat it is user apps acceptance testing so what happens is in user acceptance testing people from outside the development like people from management or people from uh, customers are encouraged to test this website so that is called uat and when all all things work fine in uat then it is moved onto live flipkart website so this is production environment or live environment so these are all tested previously in different environments by developers by testers and by uat people and then it is a live production environment so this is live environment it is very rare you find defects here because it has been it has been already already been tested by the test testers because it's their responsibility and the complete quality of the software is checked by all the all the people who are involved in the software okay so any questions on this please any questions you can type in or anybody you can type in saying no sir or if you want to ask questions can you guys talk like is it muted or is it fine okay so moving on to the next slide so what are the different phases what are the different phases of software development life cycle so what are the different phases of software development life cycle are requirements gathering so i'll explain you what is requirements gathering and analysis so if we are building a software an xyz software so we gather lot of information so we will try and understand what really we want to build so for example if we are building a e-commerce website which is flipkart or amazon so we gather requirements so we speak to the client we speak to the amazon and we will know what really you guys want to perform on the website so amazon says we want to sell products so these all the tasks these all tasks gathering the information all these tasks is done by a business analyst so he will communicate with the customers he will communicate with 
the stakeholders. He will communicate with the people who are using the website. He will communicate with uh, people who want to use the website. And he will gather all the requirements or functionalities and he will write down those things in SRS document, which is software requirement specification document. And it is the responsibility of a BA, which is business analyst. Okay, so that is one phase, requirements gathering and analysis. This is one phase. And the next phase is design. So I'll show you one small example of designs. Yeah. So designs are basically done by design developers or UX, we call them as UX or user experience which is called UX, user experience. And I will show you one example. What is design? So design. So this is this is this is done by a design developer. So how should the Flipkart website or the Amazon website should look on a website or uh, on a mobile phone? How should the same website look on a desktop computer? How should it look like in an Android phone? How should it look like in a iPhone? So these are all called wireframes. So someone, someone is responsible for designing. The people who are responsible for designing are called designers or design developers. To Flipkart again. Okay, so the design developers, they develop the logo. And they will, they will say that the flip card has to be in blue color, okay? And this will be communicated with the business analyst. And the business analyst will write down in a specification document saying that the home, home button, when you click on the home button, flip card, the flip card spelling has to be in blue color. The font has to be in blue color. And explore plus has to be gray and the plus has to be, has to be in orange color. So this this all will be all will be written in the specification document, and in the wireframes. If you, I've just shown you the wireframes, so this these designs will be with the with the with the design developer. Okay, so the business analyst will define the business analyst and the designer will sit down and they define. Okay, the groceries has to be here. These promotions or advertisements has to be here. This is a frame. If you see, this is a frame from here. This is all a frame. So in this frame, the advertisements have to be there. And in this frame, we have to have groceries, mobiles, fashion, electronics, home furniture. So these have to be here. And when I, when I, when I hover or when I click on fashion, the, dro the drop down ha options has to be shown. And for groceries, no drop down option has to be there. And for home furniture, the drop down option has to be shown. So these are all the requirements. And as a tester, you need to test. You need to, you need to understand and you need to test. Okay, when I hover over home and furniture, I have to see that there is drop-down options available. If the drop-down options are not available, it's a fail. It's a defect. It's a bug. Because in specifications document, it is mentioned that when I hover on home and furniture, it's not clicking, not clicking, by just hovering on it, it has to show the options, okay? This, everything, this comes on, this comes into the design phase, okay? 
So moving on to the next one. implementation or coding okay so when i go back to this page so what really happens okay we got design and it is mentioned in the specification document but when i click on the monitor if this functionality doesn't work or this code so there is a code behind it there is in the in the background there is code happening in the background like when I click on monitors, it has to land in this page, which is the filters page. So the developers will write a code. Okay, the developers will write a code. Okay, when I when I hover on this, it has to change to blue. When I click on it, it has to land in a new window. So this button, buy now, button has to be functional or add to cart, this has to be functional. Or add item, it has to be functional. So when I click on add item, it should say item added to cart. When I click on add item, if nothing is happening, it's a defect, it's a bug. Because the developer has forgot to put the code in here or place order. When I click on place order, it has to land in login page. If it doesn't work, it's a, it's, it's a bug. So when I click on continue without entering my mobile number or email address, a message should be displayed. Please enter valid email ID or mobile number. So these are all the things a developer writes code so that when you click on the continue button or functionality, it will display this particular number so if i put some random numbers if i put some random numbers it says please enter a valid email or mobile number because it's only five digits so this is all this is all responsibility of a developer or this is all is code which is written in the background and this phase this phase is called implementation or coding phase and after that, we have the next phase. This is our phase as testers. This is a testing phase. Okay. Always remember, Flipkart, once when the code has been written and the unit testing has been performed, the code has to be moved to test environment. And as a tester, as a tester, you should always test in the test environment. You should, you should remember this. It is very important that you need to test in the test environment. It's a very rare situation where in some companies, it's a very rare situation. They might ask you to test in the dev, development environment only. Sometimes it is very rare, but it is always your responsibility to ask the developer, where is my test environment? to test the functionalities. It is your responsibility to ask the developer or the business analyst to get your environment, which is test environment. So it might look like, it, it might look like something like this, flipkart forward slash test.com. It might look like this, test environment. It might say in the URL itself, it's a test environment sometimes. Okay, so it's your responsibility to test in the test environment. So what is it you are doing in the testing phase? You're trying to find bugs. You're trying to compare the requirements document, the, the software requirement specification document. So whatever it is written in the document, is it as per the document? Or do we got any bugs? I'll show you one small bug. So for example, if you click here, and if you click here, if the page is not going to this particular page, it's a defect. It's a link broken defect. So 
So what happens is sometimes when the links are broken, what happens? You get a 404 error. 404 error. So this is the error. The requested URL bad page was not found on this server. So you need to find these kind of these kind of bugs on the test environment. So this is a testing phase. Okay. Moving on to next phase is deployment. So what happens is after when you find the defects, the defects have been fixed. And uh, as per the fun as per the requirements document, everything is working fine as expected. You have done your verification and validation. You have done all your job. So what happens is the code So this code here, or the code, whichever is involved, the code is involved, is moved to the production environment, live environment. Okay. So which is, this is the live environment. So what happens is when the term is called deployment. So when from the test environment, when everything is fine, from the test environment, it is moved to UAT when the UAT testing is done. And from UAT, the code will be deployed to the production environment. Because all the bugs have been fixed and it is tested by the stakeholders, shareholders, and it is being tested by the people outside the company, the people who do not have any knowledge of the system. So from your company, some XYZ person has been selected to be to test on the UAT environment. And then when everything is fixed and when everything looks fine, this code is deployed onto live environment or the production environment, and it is live. It is live for customers. It is live for everybody. And everybody across the world can use this particular website, which is Flipkart. So what happens? So next is maintenance. So what is the next phase? Next phase is maintenance phase. So what does really the maintenance phase? So for example, after testing, after testing the website, it has to be maintained. The website has to be maintained. So for example, there is a change. There is a small change or a request change then that change has to go again into the development and from development to the test environment and test environment to the UAT and then again deployed onto production environment. Maintenance and support. So what happens is some people call and they say that, uh, how should I navigate to the sign-in page? And support has to be given. Maintenance and support has to be given. So someone might ask, uh, I'm not getting my OTPs. So how do we resolve it on the live? So someone has to check what, what, what really is happening. So maintenance, regular updates, maintenance has to be done. And other maintenance, for, for example, if I click on the home button, if you see these advertisements or promotions, which you can see here, So these are all to be maintained. So one more term which is used here is content management system, which is called C CMS. System. So in this website, yeah, this is all content. So this, these pictures have to be uploaded to this website using what you will up, upload. So you need to remember this tool as called content management system tools. Okay. In the market, <clears throat> there are many tools, WordPress, Sitecore. These are all 
content management systems using this content management system so for example if they want to change the caption here they use the content management system and use the caption and and they can change the caption to export plus to uh, explore wide or explore worldwide so you using the content management system tools we can change the content here and you can also upload photos using content management tools so these tools are used by the developer so as a knowledge i'm sharing you how how people upload these images so they use content management systems like wordpress magneto sitecore so using those they upload all these images into this website and functionality wise there is code written so for example if i click on this link a new window it should open in a new window the developer writes a code and when you click on go cart button so this functionality when you click on it the code is written saying that when you click on to go to cart it has to land in the cart option here if you see the cart option if i click on go to cart the number changes it changes to 4 there you go it changes to 4 and it has to be tested when you add number of items into the cart the number of items number should match if it doesn't match it is again a bug okay so these are so these are the these are the phases these are the phases of software development life cycle these are all the phases of software development life cycle requirements gathering design implementation testing development uh, deployment and maintenance so requirements gathering and analysis is done by business analyst design is done by design developers implementation and coding is done by developers testing is done by testers deployment is done by release management team maintenance is done by the support and maintenance team there are different people different people doing different jobs so if you go back to this definition again software development life cycle is important because it helps ensure that right people are involved in the right activities at the right times using a structured approach to developing software helps ensure that your project will be successful regular maintenance and updates are done to the website okay so any questions any questions please no questions so shall we conclude this today and uh, same time tomorrow i will go through the sdlc models which is software development life cycle models like waterfall model v model agile model and what is scrum method so i'll i'll go through all this stuff tomorrow okay and also if you got any questions uh, you can ask me tomorrow or if you have any questions right now you can ask right now if there are no questions from me i think one person has typed no no questions anybody anybody else any more questions uh so yeah. if uh, after deployment or maintenance everything is done and then also candidate or end user if they find some defect or some so is testing is ongoing process or yes that uh, that's a good question yeah so what happens is in the live environment so for example when it is in live in live also sanity testing is done which is like main functionalities so for example sign in and uh, 
uh, certain things are tested. So for example, cart and if suppose, if suppose you find a bug in live environment. So what happens is we call them an in live environment, since it is live environment, what happens is we call it as hot fix. What happens is in live environment, if you find live environment, if you find a defect or a bug in live environment, the priority is to test, to retest the bug in live itself. Here itself, you need to test it, retest. So someone pointed, some customer said that, okay, uh, for example, if I click on this, I can't see the image. So one customer said that I can't see the image. I, I really don't know what product I'm buying. I can't see the image in the product display page as well. So this is in live environment. So this is since a high priority. So as soon as someone points out as a tester, it is your responsibility to test immediately that, okay, so that customer has said that, yes, he is not able to see the image. So it is a bug. So you will raise an, a bug a bug, immediate bug. So that bug is fixed as a high priority bug, okay? That's one thing. And also, if you see in our phases, we got maintenance phase and support phase, okay? In support phase, we got the support team. So what happens is when the customer tells the support team, the support team will raise a ticket or will raise an issue and assign it directly to the developer, okay? And then the developer might request you to test it, retest it in live and ask you to do a retest in live and uh, ask you to put some replication steps or the support team might put the replication steps. It's two ways. So as soon as the developer fix the bug, so what happens is, that bug is again moved into the test environment. In test environment, you need to test that when I click on this particular product, it should display the image. And once when you confirm that you are able to see the image, then again, it is moved to UAT and UAT testing is done and again, it will be deployed onto the live environment. Is that fine? Did I clear your question? Yeah. And that testing is regression testing. When Which we one? do it again, what do you explain? Called... No, A regression testing is, I'll tell you what is regression testing. Okay. Yeah. So for example, you are testing this particular module, okay? And your testing is done, okay? Mm -hmm. So someone else is testing this module and the testing is completed and someone is testing. So all the testers are testing their own modules, okay? So what happens is, if you test these login functionality and if you test this functionality here, and cart functionality, that is called regression testing. Once when you finish all your testing, then when you test, once when you finish all your testing, and when you test these things are working fine or not, that is called regression testing, okay? You're testing okay. the main functionalities, yeah? And making sure it is not broken here. So when the developer develops, he might accidentally break something here. He might accidentally break something here in login. He might accidentally break something else in profile. So what you need to do, once when you finish your testing, you are responsible to check the other functionalities, which is login, sign up, orders, wish list, rewards, gift cards. They are working as expected. Even this footers, all these links have to work properly. That is called regression testing. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank and you. what is, yeah. And what is retesting? So what is retesting is you raised a bug saying that this profile 
functionality is not working or wish list for functionality is not working. So you raised a bug and the developer has fixed the bug. Then you need to know that the profile functionality is working fine. So you need to confirm by doing retesting. So you will retest again saying that, okay, my profile functionality is working fine now. Previously, it is not working. And after the bug fix, when I did the retesting, it's working fine. And also remember when you do the retesting and when you finish your retesting, you need to again do the regression testing because accidentally the developer might break something else while fixing this. Okay. Hope you understood the difference between retesting and regression testing. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Any any more yep. questions? Deepthi, Anirudha, Monica, Sinduri. Now, shall we conclude? So I'll conclude this today uh, here, and uh, we will meet tomorrow same time today there was some technical problem uh, that's the reason i was able to join a bit late so tomorrow i will start the sdlc modules which is waterfall v v model and agile scrum okay thank you thank you very much guys meet you tomorrow Thank you, sir. Thank you.